imitating the virtue of God. Today we celebrate the solemnity of a great man, very humble and kind, Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary and the prophet. When we contemplate on the life of Jesus, we will see that it's like a special kind of person God himself has chosen. Give him a special grace, grace to be able to carry out his responsibility of being the guardian redeemer of his own son. This grace, though with freedom, Joseph was able to carry out his responsibility as the guardian of his of the son of God, Jesus. If you watch through the scriptures, you will understand and see that you hardly hear the voice of Joseph. Everything about him is reported, seems people reporting who he is, what he did. And in all of them, it seems as if he is just partial, partial in everything. You can say, oh, what's the concrete thing that Joseph actually holds and say, this is, you know, except that he is the first father of Jesus Christ. And you can see, even in that go, it seems the same way. Um, harsh. This is the kind of um, behavior we see. When God wants to choose you for something, he gives you the grace of that very position. The life of St. Joseph is a life that um, sometimes uh, people don't want to pray that kind of role. Is it not true? People don't want to pray that kind of role, to be just in the invisible one, when you ought to be the one, the visible one. So Joseph is that kind of person. And you can see in our readings today, the, the gospel reading, see what happened here. Very, very... Um, uh, if you think deep about this situation, you will understand why we talk about the magnanimity, that is the greatness of Joseph's heart. The magnanimity of his heart is so great. What happened? This is a young man who has been um, engaged, you can put it that way, to marry a beautiful woman. They are already engaged. They told me that they have already engaged the next thing, but they have not started living together. Because the marriage life right has not been completed, a kind of here comes this um, lady who got pregnant, and you know the story of Annunciation. Mary, when he got the message of Annunciation, what happened? He went where? Eh? He went to Elizabeth and stayed how many days? Three months. So it means that he left. Joseph, and he stayed away for what? Three months and came back pregnant. But we understand the situation that we are addressing here. When he came back, the news that he's pregnant, and this is the news to Joseph after three months. So you could have understand why Joseph is actually uh, decided on his own. He knows in Jewish tradition, when this happened, it's going to be stone, 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 stoning her to death when this is discovered. And at the three months, is already a point of uh, where you begin to discover what is going on. And what did he decide to do? He decided to send her away quietly. When this were sending her away quietly, if you realize and understand how Joseph must have loved Mary, you will know that it's a painful kind of action to take. It's a painful and sad option to take. When a woman you love so much, you have to send her away. It's also a very sacrificial kind of decision. And he has made up his mind what to do. He has made up his will what to do. Before another controversial message came to him again in the dream and said, you see, all these your messages, all these your decision you have concluded, thought about, I believe Joseph must be a man who contemplates deeply. For him to even think twice and think after all the things and the best decision for him is to send the woman away what quietly. 
So you must have thought about it, reflect deeply about it. It's not like some of us today who don't think. Immediately something happens, you take action immediately and you scatter the whole thing. Fathers, please learn from Joseph. Not every action that you you take decision immediately. Sometimes I have one of my sisters that whenever I ask her of something, eh, she will say, okay, 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 I'll get back to you. She would think about it, even when it seemed like if you have forgotten. Yes, you see that thing you told me. I've been thinking about it, and this is the decision. But some of my other sisters, it's not like that. The other one, I say, okay, if you want it like that, okay, you want it this way. That one, anything you say, you will just take it like that. She will hardly put, but the other one will think about it. And this is the kind of person that sometimes we need. That, that sometimes you need a situation. You think critically about it before making your decision. And this is what Joseph did. But in making the decision, in deciding that this is what is best, and for us, I think, that should be the best option. Is it not? But God intervened and said to him, this one, this time around, a very difficult task. Now take this woman as your Oh. This thing did not happen in a physical confrontation where in a dream in a dream imagine that so many things that God has communicated to us in a dream should we pay attention to them but Joseph is a man who thinks deeply who understands himself and the meaning of dreams and his dreams he took Mary silently believe me all these are happening I don't think the kindred the family members, all the whole people know about it. It may be between the two of them. Conflict. Because if the people should know, they will revolt against it. If the people should know, even though one or two, there's no way that they will not have exposed and said, oh, Jesus is not the son of this man. It would have been a case. And you know, in, in, when it comes to King Red Matter, they always want to carry matters in their head, which is not their own. So believe me, this case must be between the two of them, husband and wife. When issues come up in your home, when issues spring up in your home, how do you handle them? Do you handle them silently between the two of you and try to see the best option to manage it? See the way these two couple manage this situation. It didn't escalate at all. They were able to guide it, seeking the face of God. Mary was addressed. Don't worry, God will be in charge. And she believed. Joseph was worried, trying to send her away, and the dream came and said, take her back. Because it's a special mission. And she took her back. Brothers and sisters, God always communicates to us. God always directs our path. If we, if we listen to him. So today, let us learn to listen to this kind of character of St. Joseph, especially the silent personality of St. Joseph. He's a man of silence. It's not all the time that we should, we should be at the world, at the, at the uh, front of all the affairs. Sometimes play that role of what? Just being silent, just being partial, but very, very committed. Nobody knows how long he stayed. Nobody talks about his, uh, uh, every other thing, but you can see, he's just known as a carpenter. He's just known as Yes, the father of Jesus. And what happened to him? What, what, what happened later, later? Nobody can give concrete example of that. The only thing was his own character and attitude. Even when Jesus got missing, Joseph was there. Did he say anything? He was silent. So, brothers and sisters, let us learn from this man. And we pray that through the intercession of St. Joseph, that he will help us to imitate this character of being silent, contemplative, and also paying attention to God's directive. Very, very important. Paying attention to God's directive. Because in every situation, whether good or bad, God has a way to direct us out of those problems, out of those circumstances, especially our fathers. Today we celebrate this great man. We also celebrate our fathers. And we pray that the Lord will give them wisdom to govern their home, to make right decisions, and also to be patient when necessary. We pray also for our Holy Father, the Pope, 
today marks also the anniversary of his pontiff. Lord, we continue to strengthen him and guide him our right from the way he guided us from Joseph through Christ our Lord. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God. 